electricity of telephone, that sector will work so that you don't have to dig the road twice or you can design all of them together. So we took an approach of creating a, our operation urban plan to focus three, four things. One, we want to make it green and smart. Not only green and smart. It's got to be intelligent system, et cetera. When you come out from the train, you don't have to wait. Maybe in 10 minutes you come fast from the MRT, then you wait, you know, 40 minutes for a taxi. That's not very smart. So we need to be able to link intermodal connection, et cetera. And you have now with the gadgets which can do that. Inclusive. We can't forget the urban poor. Those could be one point dollar people, those could be ten dollar people. You can have to be inclusive, take those lower end of the society along. Otherwise you will have a divided city which has not produced the kind of results for livable purposes. The competitive I mentioned, and those <coughs> are part of our policy. We have uh, lent so far about twenty billion and we continue to lend about three, four billion dollar a year for this purpose. Sustainable transport, our focus is we're going to move from roads to moving to public transport <clears throat> and walking, bicycling, and things of that type. In Rio plus 20, in, in Rio meeting, we committed eight development banks, including ADB. We said we will pull our resources of $175 billion to invest in sustainable transport. This is small. Uh, we, we will have about, uh, ADB's share will be about 10%, uh, 15% of this. But it's still to show commitment that you need to move from road to public to walking to bicycle and, and energy efficiency, electric car, whatever there may be. So this is a commitment made, uh, and I think this, we need many times more. And just to show you that the commitment is translating to my portfolio, uh, 2000. We had about, uh, you see, only 2% were in the urban and in the railways and public transport. We're going to go to 30%. So this has been changing the paradigm completely within the bank. And this will change, uh, hopefully, send the message to the region as a whole. And same in the water business, we will be talking about more reuse of water, reduce, reuse, recycle, the three R, and we will focus both on water security, drinkable water, as we mentioned, river basin, etc., flood, so on. To me, one of the most unhappy part of my own operation in the ADB, even if the media is here, I hope you don't quote too much, is the water supply system we build in Asia, except for a few cities, we can't turn the tap and drink it. So what are we doing? Investing money to build water and not being able to drink. So I did one study in my academics days in, when I was in Thailand. We had provided the clean water, but by the, by the treatment plant drinks you the clean water, by the time it goes to home, it's not drinkable. In fact, you brought in more diseases closer to home. In fact, there were people getting more sick than before. At least previously, they were boiling and drinking. Now they say, I have a tap water. I think this is... This whole 24-7 drinkable should be demanded. As uh, Lin Heng was saying, water right or something, right to right for water or something. I think this, is, um, this needs to be done. And uh, hopefully with business like Professor Ko, who had been in the water areas, I think I hope we can push more and more of this. Reuse, like you have done in here. It's a matter of pricing properly. If, if water were priced properly, if energy were not subsidized, many of these will become viable on its own. So we will continue to, our target is, we will uh, provide 500 million people with safe, in the 2006 to 20, half a billion people with safe drinking water, hopefully drinkable, 96 million people with better irrigation, 170 million people with reduced flood, et cetera, et cetera. This is a commitment. Um, and it's a public commitment, therefore we could be, we have a scorecard, by the way, people can look at it and criticize us if we don't meet it. On the clean energy front, we will focus, continue to focus on the mitigation. We will have a big program on sustainable transport to change the paradigm. We'll also work in the red plus area, in the forestry, 
to be able to get the advantage that carbon credits could be given, although the price is at low at the moment. Uh, there are mechanisms we are doing with the help of some Japan. Maybe we can pay much more than what the market price. Never mind the market price, which is less than a dollar today on carbon. But we can pay $10 if that is required. That's why you need the Global Climate Fund and grant. And by the way, some money has come to us. We said, please pay $10. We don't mind, because this is still a good cause. Adaptation to me remains, as I said, a very difficult area, but a must area without this, you know, what are we talking, climate change. So I hope everybody puts their bit to make this possible. I must also be very thankful to the global community. The money is coming. We have lots of money coming in. It may not be enough, but the desire to provide the money is there. And if we have great ideas, I think these resources, I believe, would come in both from the donors, bilaterals, ourselves, CSR, etc., because people do realize this is a very, very important issue. And at least we have no problem raising the money for our business in this area. And the difficult area for me, as I said, investing in natural capital. Nobody's willing to spend money on, on ecosystem protect, protection. If you look at this chart, the the Himalayas, which is called the water towers of Asia, provide the source of water for one billion people. It provides for one billion people. The greater Mekong sub-region provides it for 60 million people. You take the next one, the heart of Borneo, which is the largest continuous forest in Asia with 22 million hectares of biodiversity. The coral reef triangle, 3.8 billion, which is almost 4 billion in annual fisheries export from that. I don't think we seem to be really clearly pricing this properly and making the decision to protect it. This is the weakest in my, in my view. So therefore, investment in natural capital is very important, and we uh, ourselves are trying to do it. I won't say we're perfect, but this is something we need, we need to do it even more in future. I look at, therefore, we have designed some program like Coral Triangle Initiative, Coral Reef Fisheries, Flood Securities, Heart of Borneo Initiative, the Greater Mekong Sub-Region Initiative, uh, Himalaya. Uh, I come from Nepal, so this is very dear to me, the mountains uh, sectors. Now a little bit on the environment governance. The third one, the third box of the ADB. Here, we need to, we have lots of laws, regulations. One simple difficulty in many countries is enforcement. They don't seem to be enforcing. What's good is law if it's not enforced. So this is a huge governance issue. Second part is the accountability and stakeholder participant mechanism. I think people need to be brought into this movement. They need to be a part of this. The third is mainstreaming and integrating environment policy and development. You know, the environmental impact assessment did a great job. I'll show you later. Great job, but it needs to go beyond that on, on that. So in, in summary, uh, strengthening environment governance and management capacity in the Asia-Pacific region is very important. The environment ministries except for cities, countries like developed countries like Singapore and others. In most of the countries, correct me, this is my own view, correct me from looking at 70 onwards, have become even weaker because environment agenda has become so high, it's in the planning ministry, it's the head of the state talking about it, the Ministry of Finance talking about it. The environment ministry has become even weaker in many countries because in terms of the resource and their availability. On one hand, you can be happy everybody is doing it, but if you are not able to have the good government, and enforce it, then you're weak. That's what I see in Asia from my eyes. Now, to us, this is a very important part. Therefore, you see our environmental sustainability program continues to grow in terms of both the numbers. And we, we between 2001 and 2012, it's about $30 billion business. So I have to get it right, governance, policies, uh, investments, because it is almost... 30-40% of the bank business today. So environment of business. Now this I won't bore you, but you can take a look at it. This is simply to show that if you, if you had a look at the energy sector, if you had come to the bank ADB in 1970, we were funding probably coal fire power plant, the sector a little. Today we're talking at the high end, carbon capture and storage, high IPCC technology. There's been an evolution of the types of investment, type of technology, type of business that are changed in each sector. I won't bore you. And the same thing is true in the forestry. Today we won't do the timber plantation project, which we did back in 19...